Hi, I'm Joanna, and today's topic is on deep learning visualizations. These are key to understanding what's happening inside a model after it's been trained. So in this video, I want to walk through a variety of visualization techniques you can use and answer two commonly asked questions related to visualizations. One, how do I visualize the weights of a convolutional neural network? And two, how can I use visualization techniques on non-image networks? So let's start with visualization techniques. To set this up, I'm going to use a model that my colleague designed to identify different categories of wildlife. The model is bear or not bear. A bear is clearly a bear and anything else would be not a bear. So here's the test data, which is just a mixture of bears, sheeps, uh, maybe coyotes, and there's a random dog in there too. So we can select the network and see what predictions look like for these test images. So here I select one bear and it's classified as a bear. So at least for this image, the model is working properly. But now let's use all of our test images. Here you can see that the bears are classified as bears and everything else is not a bear. So for this, it's looking like, at least for our test images, the model is working properly. But now let's use three commonly used deep learning visualizations and then test them out on the images. The first visualization is image line. And this is to identify where in the network the network is looking to make a determination. So here I have an image of a coyote. It's being classified as not a bear. The confidence is 100%. And I want to use image line to identify where in the image the network is looking. So this takes a second to run, so I've already run this ahead of time. But you can see that the model is looking pretty much everywhere in the image uh, to classify this as not a bear. And so this is not really focused on the animal, and that might indicate that while the classification was correct, the reason why it was classified might not be. Let's move on to another visualization called GradCam. We can set up GradCam fairly simply, and I'm using an Inception V3 network, so the names of the layers are here. So here's the image of my bear, and here's the image of GradCam, indicating that it's looking directly at the bear for its bear prediction, which gives a good indication that the network has found the bear correctly. Moving on to our final visualization technique, this is occlusion sensitivity. This is by far the easiest to implement with just a few lines of code, and it only takes a few seconds to run as well. Here I'm going to show a picture of a sheep, which is labeled not bear, and that's correct. But we wanna see where the visualization is actually going to be taking place. Okay, here the visualization is showing that it's not a bear and it's indicated directly in the center of the sheep. I was really hoping that the horns were gonna light up for the reason, but you can't win them all. Okay, so moving on. Uh, we've shown some really good visualization techniques like GradCam, image lime, and occlusion sensitivity. But now we want to see what's happening inside of the model. And so I have two examples of that. The first is Deep Dream. And here we can visualize the network's learned features. So we can visualize the first 25 features learned by the network at the second convolutional layer. So these are very pretty. Um, and I'll be honest, while I find Deep Dream visually pleasing, I don't use this very often as a debugging technique, um, though I would be interested in anyone who has examples of success. So sometimes Deep Dream can be helpful for later layers of the network as well. And so the later layers take a little bit longer to run. Um, so I ran this ahead of time. And at a later layer, you could see more information on um, what's happening inside the network. If you look at documentation, Sometimes the network will show some very interesting images, but here we're looking at bear and not bear, and it's not showing a whole lot of detail that I can see. Um, it could work in certain scenarios. So for example, um, is it learning uh, maybe about the tire that you saw in that one image as an animal feature? Not to say that you can actually see that in this image, it's just saying that that's an example of how Deep Dream could be used to debug. Running even more iterations, uh, you can see some stronger features, but I still don't see a lot to talk about here, at least for this example. So let's move on to our next example. 
So the final visualization technique we want to talk about today is activations. This is similar to Deep Dream, and you can use it after an image is passed through a specific channel, and it's showing the learned features from the network. You can see that at this convolutional layer, things still look like bears, and you can pull the strongest channel and visualize that as well. So here you have an example of the original bear and the strongest channel at that layer. And there's a great doc example for more information on visualizing activations. This example goes through lots of activations of faces and how certain features really light up in certain channels. So that's it for visualizations and code. On to two quick questions. One, how do I visualize the weights of a convolutional layer? You can use Deep Dream Image for this, which can visualize the network features. Typically, it's more interesting to visualize the first few convolutional layers of a network before the filters get too complicated. Here's an example. The code is actually pretty easy to follow through, and there's only a few lines of code. And it's looking at the first convolutional layer, um, and it's visualizing the first 25 features learned by the first convolutional layer. And what you're seeing here is that it's learning things like colors, line, and perhaps texture, which is typical at the beginning of most convolutional neural networks. The second question is, what about visualizations of non-image networks? So everything you've seen today dealt with images. So the quick answer is you can still use some of these techniques for non-image networks as well. Let's look at a quick example. So here is a blog post written by a developer talking about wine. And in the visualization section, he's looking at the tasting notes and making predictions based on those tasting notes. So you can read the tasting notes here and the label of the wine is Gewürztraminer. But the question is, why did it make that network prediction? So you can look at occlusion and see which words were the most strongly tied to the prediction. And you can see here the highest scores were for peaches and nectarines and then also for intense notes of lychee. And so this is why the network chose this wine category classification. So occlusion sensitivity helps with insight into the network, even for these text-based examples. So that's it for today. If you'd like to learn more about deep learning visualizations, start with this blog post, which covers similar information to what we discussed today, along with the code examples. Let me know what you think about the visualizations in the comments below, and thanks for watching.